Hi, Tom Walls, Carbide Processors. Want to quickly demonstrate some of our machine coolant testing. This is the cobalt, these are the cobalt test strips. Uh, there's a gauge on the side. Inside you see a strip. One end has got the arrows pointing at the other end. You hold the arrows. There's a little pad at the other end. This is some cobaltous ammonia sulfate I mixed up in the lab. It just you're not going to run across this in real life. It's just a real high concentration of cobalt because what happens is you dip it in. You see that turn, the end turn bright blue. So you take that and you match that blue color with the side of the tube. And you can see this is really strong. And I mixed it really strong so it shows up on the video. Let's do that one more time. And we will take a, take a strip, grab the arrows, dip it in whatever you want to test. All right, you can see it. That's the side that's that's the side going in. Pull it out, and it's dark blue. Match it against the chart on the side of the little can tube, whatever it comes in, and that tells you how much you have. The government measures this by exposure. What you want to do is you want to be as low as you can. Give you a reference. Boeing aircraft changes it when it's a when there's any trace of blue at the 10 milligram per liter or less. If you filter, if you filter out all the crud, you can keep a lot of it out of here, and you can keep your coolant clean for a year or so. Okay, let's try. Oops, I'm going to keep that out. We're going to try something else here as part of a quick video and that is these are pH strips pH fix 0 to 14 pH is a measure of the hydrogen ions in it it's really important it's sort of like the dash sort of like the battery gauge alternator generator gauge the electrical gauge on the dashboard of your car you really can't do much without affected to a chemical solution like coolant without affecting the pH Zero is low, it's first before 14, as acid is low before base. So zero is zero to seven is acid, seven to 14 is basic, caustic, whatever. On this, you open it up, you take out one of the dip strips. The dip strips have got little colored pads on it in different colors. Okay, we're going to take this, see the colors there, we're going to take this, we're going to dip it in the cobalt solution, and you can see it changed colors. That's the color we have now that we've dipped it. And yeah, wasn't prepared, there we go. This is, this is the way it started out, okay? The only thing tricky about this is that when you compare it to the side of the box, Oh, that's the wrong one. That's one we haven't used yet. Here we go. When you compare it to the side of the box, I always think it ought to be held like this. You need to hold it like this. So what you do is you compare it. Or did I get that back? No, I got that backwards. I always get it back. No? No, I got it right the first time. You, if you get it upside down, it makes no sense at all. So then what you do is you compare this, and you, you match the colors up. Now this one, the red one could be one to, could be seven to ten. The yellow one, this is yellow all the way across the top. This is yellow turning into red, and we have a yellow one here. So then we compare the greens, and this one has got sort of an olive color to it. So it's got sort of an olive color to it. So it best matches a six. So that's the way you do it. You hold it like this, and you just find out where all four colors match the best, and that gives you a pretty good idea. There are much more accurate ways of doing this involving special instruments and whatnot, but what we're working on here is something easy and simple that you can do on a production basis, um, easy, simple, and inexpensively, where you don't need a lab. All right, this is a nitric acid solution I mixed up. We're going to dip it in here. And we're going to pull it out, and 
here you can see different it's a different color than these are different colors than we got before particularly the top you can see how red that or purple whatever that is at the top so we will take this one that's purple at the top we will match it now matching at the purple once again there we go once again the bottom three could be any one of these across here but when you get into the the really dark purple could be a zero a one or a two but it's really really acidic and that's okay these things don't work as well at the at the extreme ranges the ranges but you shouldn't be there anyway your pH should be somewhere around seven and this really should be in the literature you get from your manufacturer this is the bacteria and fungus test you open it up you do not touch the slides inside those are special substance that bacteria and fungus like to grow on you dip it in to the solution you're going to test don't get your fingers in there just dip it in then without touching it you put it back in the plastic container screw it tightly tight screw it tight put it someplace out of the sunlight on a shelf it says two to three days sometimes for me it takes four days or more our place gets cool overnight which inhibits growth but at the end of four three four days you will see a lot you will see maybe you will see little specks growing on here you might see some color right around the edges you count the number of specks it's not the size of the specks you count the number of specks and that tells you because each little speck was a separate bacterium that started a colony and started to reproduce because this stuff is really good bacteria and fungus food I have seen saw shops that had where you couldn't grow bacteria on this at all they were that clean so it's entirely possible this is this is a graduated cylinder which I recommend because it gives you measurements uh, you collect coolant and I suggest that you you test the coolant coming out of the nozzle onto the workpiece so you test the coolant <clears throat> You fill this up with coolant coming out of there in about an hour you're going to get about 90 95 percent of the separation you're ever going to get so at the end of about an hour you'll see how much tramp oil and grease you have floating at the top you'll see how much crud settles out on the bottom you may have grease that sticks to the side possible but anyway this will give you a pretty good idea of how much tramp oil and grease you have how much hard solid crud you have in the bottom you can do this with a beer bottle any clear container um, these I like because they give you numbers and I like numbers because you can write numbers down and measure it day to day when you go to clean these use a little detergent a little dish soap whatever you got a little soap to get the oils and grease out of it the last coolant testing thing is to test your coolant concentration it's based on the refraction of light this is the Otago pocket pal one pocket refractometer refractometers used to be optical you would look through them like a telescope I used to use those because they're a little more accurate and more traditional and I think they're a little cheaper but I was in a sawmill the lighting wasn't real good where we were over the machines we were wearing safety glasses and hard hats and I'm trying to teach a guy how to use it and what you're looking at is a dark you've got a dark gray line and a sort of a medium gray bottom against kind of a light gray background and he said he turned to me and he said you know it may be me but I can't see that and I realized that what works in the lab does not work in production once again what I'm giving you here are production tests if a real scientist comes in and wants to quibble with you about your pH reading and that you're saying it's a 2 when it should be a 2.067 or something agree with him what we're trying to do is we're trying to get you within a range these are production uh, we're trying to keep you close so if your coolant should be a seven and a half this is going to tell you whether it's an eight or a six which is a pretty good pretty good deal but anyway on this one it's electronic it's digital you press start 
because it's got a big blue button that says start. Okay, you put a little bit of tap water or distilled water, or whatever you use to mix coolant, you put a little bit of that in, in, in the trough to cover the lens, then you press zero. Okay, you press zero, the lights blink, what is it, zero, 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 R, 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 whatever. Okay, you press that, when that's done, you put a little bit of your coolant in there, press start, and it'll tell you what your coolant concentration is. These are much easier to use than the, than the optical. Um, they're really robust. I'll calibrate them with tap water or whatever is handy. I'm not really worried about it because once again what we want to do is get close. If your concentration is supposed to be 10 percent, 9.5 is good, 10.5 is good, 1 percent is not. I've seen it. I've seen places where the coolant was supposed to be 10 percent and it was actually 1 or 2. So this will get you really, really close in an easy, simple, straightforward manner. Um, if you really want scientific quality stuff, fine. My sympathies are with a guy out there in the plant floor who had this dumped on him or an operator or whatever. You, don't, you just don't need the time and the money and the special training to tell the difference between a concentration of 10 and 10 point one three six percent. Uh, this isn't this isn't lab science. This is real easy, straightforward manufacturing for guys that have got a lot better things to do. But that's it. That's pretty much what I've got. That's a brief overview of the stuff we sell. Good stuff, robust stuff. Uh, it'll really help you manage your coolant. Boy, and I ran twelve minutes. Sorry, guys. These are supposed to be two or three, but I wanted to cover this for one particular customer anyway. So thank you. Bye.